Well, hello, Kingdom Kids. Welcome, welcome. It is August 22nd and 23rd, and this is our online weekend lesson. So I'm so glad you joined us. So let's jump right in and have a look at what we're going to be learning this weekend. Here we go. Okay, boys and girls, so you know what to do. You're going to grab your Bible and your device if you have one, and you're going to turn to the book of Acts. That is in the New Testament. And then you're going to turn to the 16th chapter of that book. And then you're going to read verses 22 through 40. It's very exciting. You're going to really like this this uh, this this part of the Bible. It's really, really cool. Now remember, you can pause the video now and go to BibleGateway.com and have the audio option read these verses to you while you follow along in your Bible. So go ahead and start doing that. Pause the video. And then when you're done, I'm going to have a couple of questions for you so that you can think a little bit more about what you just read. And then we'll go into some worship. Here we go. Okay, boys and girls, really good job. I'm proud of you for reading that in your Bible. That is how we grow in God's Word, and that is how we um, have power when we are in good times and in bad times, is when we know God's Word. So, you are a disciple of Christ when you, have, when you let Jesus be the Lord of your life. So, I am calling you a disciple. And here is how disciples study God's Word. When you read the Bible, when you read God's Word, you should ask yourself these five questions. When you were reading, what passage stood out or spoke to you the most? So what that means is you're reading it and all of a sudden you go, oh, that really helps me with that situation I was just having. Gosh, I need to think more about that. So you want to really think about that. Next, how does it affect your view of God? When you read that that pat those passages what does it tell you about god what does it tell you about yourself and what does it say maybe about other people so really think about it really think through those things when you're reading also how does it challenge you to obey and imitate jesus what did we learn through paul because he learned from jesus and the holy spirit inspired him to write these things down so we really want to think about how does it challenge you to obey Jesus? Also, by relying on the Holy Spirit, so you rely on the Holy Spirit, you will do what? What are you going to do based on what you've read? Can you, can you respond differently in certain situations you've been in recently? Those are some things to think about. And then the last question is, who might I share this passage with this week? Um, when we study God's Word and we become inspired, we should always share our hope and our good news with others. So make sure you're doing that. All right, let's move right along. All right, boys and girls, so this is the part of the weekend where we just do one worship song together. So remember, you can stand, you can sit, you can be in a, your prayer position to where you can think, think and pray to God while we're worshiping. You can sing along and you know the words. So this will be some be fun. So let's go ahead and jump right in to worship. So do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness And all these things will be given to you as well Therefore do not worry if 
about tomorrow For tomorrow will worry about itself Each day has enough trouble of its own Each day has enough trouble of its own Each day has enough trouble of its own Shall we wear? So do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given. As well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not worry, do not worry, for tomorrow will worry about its own. But tomorrow, do not worry. All right, boys and girls, great job. You did a wonderful job. I love that song. It's so catchy. And so that was our time together in worship. And so now what we're going to do is um, you guys have already read in your Bibles. You've thought about all that you've read. And now we're going to watch the video um, because, remember, we love to read God's Word. We can definitely watch a video to support that. But it's always so important to read straight from Scripture when we're trying to learn about God's Word. So let's go ahead and get started. In a place called Philippi, there was a slave girl who was possessed by an evil fortune-telling spirit. Many people paid to have the girl tell their fortunes, which made her slave masters very wealthy. One day, the girl began to follow Paul and Silas around as they moved through the city. For many days, the girl followed them, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. They are showing the way to salvation. Finally, troubled by the girl's situation, Paul turned around and said to the evil spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her now. The evil spirit left the girl, and when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. The angry slave owners told the authorities, these men are Jews, and they are throwing our city into an uproar by urging people to practice illegal customs. The crowd in the marketplace gathered to hear the commotion, and soon joined in on the attack against Paul and Silas, agreeing with the slave owners. The authorities ordered Paul and Silas to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged in public, Paul and Silas were thrown to prison. The authorities commanded the jailer to guard them carefully. The jailer took his orders seriously. He put Paul and Silas in the inner cell and locked their feet in stocks, making it so they couldn't even move. 
In this terrible situation, and a great deal of pain, Paul and Silas sat in their jail cell and praised God. They prayed and sang hymns to God, but God was not the only one who heard them. All the other prisoners also heard their words and praise. At about midnight, Paul and Silas were still praying and singing hymns when a violent earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. All at once, the doors on all the cells flew open and every prisoner's chains came loose. Without anything holding the prisoners in their cells, everyone in that jail could now escape. The earthquake woke up the sleeping jailer and he saw all the cell doors open and the broken chains. Thinking that all the prisoners had escaped, he knew he was going to be in serious trouble. The jailer drew his sword to kill himself, but before he could hurt himself, Paul called out, Don't harm yourself. We are here. Overcome with relief, the jailer fell before Paul and Silas and asked, What must I do to be saved? They responded, Believe in the Lord Jesus. Paul and Silas preached God's word to the jailer and his household. The jailer brought them into his home and prepared a feast for them. After he carefully washed their wounds, Paul and Silas baptized the jailer's entire family. The jailer was filled with incredible joy because he and his entire household had come to believe in God. Okay, boys and girls, that was a fun video, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, you've done a great job, and I'm just so proud of you guys. There's my email, and um, we are just all set here. So if you guys have any questions, you can send me an email. Otherwise, tell me three things you learned this week that you didn't know before, and I will definitely issue you some tokens so that you can shop at the token store the next time you come to church in person. All right, you guys. We, um, we look forward to seeing you. God bless, and I pray that you are happy, healthy, and wise today. Bye-bye. In a place called Philippi, there was a slave girl who was possessed by an evil fortune-telling spirit. Many people paid to have the girl tell their fortunes, which made her slave masters very wealthy. One day, the girl began to follow Paul and Silas around as they moved through the city. For many days, the girl followed them, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God. They are showing the way to salvation. Finally troubled by the girl's situation, Paul turned around and said to the evil spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her now. The evil spirit left the girl, and when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. The angry slave owners told the authorities, These men are Jews, and they are throwing our city into an uproar by urging people to practice illegal customs. The crowd in the marketplace gathered to hear the commotion, and soon joined in on the attack against Paul and Silas, agreeing with the slave owners. The authorities ordered Paul and Silas to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged in public, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. The authorities commanded the jailer to guard them carefully. The jailer took his orders seriously. He put Paul and Silas in the inner cell and locked their feet in stocks, making it so they couldn't even move. In this terrible situation, and a great deal of pain. Paul and Silas sat in their jail cell and praised God. They prayed and sang hymns to God, but God was not the only one who heard them. All the other prisoners also heard their words and praise. At about midnight,
Paul and Silas were still praying and singing hymns when a violent earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. All at once, the doors on all the cells flew open, and every prisoner's chains came loose. Without anything holding the prisoners in their cells, everyone in that jail could now escape. The earthquake woke up the sleeping jailer, and he saw all the cell doors open broken chains. Thinking that all the prisoners had escaped, he knew he was going to be in serious trouble. The jailer drew his sword to kill himself, but before he could hurt himself, Paul called out, Don't harm yourself. We are here. Overcome with relief, the jailer fell before Paul and Silas and asked, What must I do to be saved? They responded, Believe in the Lord Jesus. Paul and Silas preached God's word to the jailer and his household. The jailer brought them into his home and prepared a feast for them. After he carefully washed their wounds, Paul and Silas baptized the jailer's entire family. The jailer was filled with incredible joy because he and his entire household had come to believe in God.